My subject in this paper is extracting the N and K values of optical coating layers from spectrophotometric curves. What's the problem? The problem is coatings deposited do not necessarily match the coating designs. And generally the problem is the index of refraction is not correct. So we need to characterize these values. We need three spectra to solve the fitting of N and K, but there's a possibility or general probability that there are two different solutions, just like there are two different solutions to the square root of a number. And so we need a fourth spectra to sort out which is the real solution and which is the false solution. The modeling tools now exist to get better results than previously available. So the index of refraction values of optical thin film layers are dependent upon the details of deposition parameters. So we can get significant variations. Variations in the index from chamber to chamber and process to process and facility to facility are often surprisingly different. In order to produce films which agree adequately with the design films, it's necessary to characterize these values of the indices before producing a design. Here's an example of typical three spectral curves that we take to uh, derive the N and K. The normal transmission and the normal reflection or near normal incidence. And then the reflection of the sample when turned around and measured from the back side or the reverse direction. So the, the three spectrums measured are at near normal incidence of the sample of interest. And then also while we're at it, it'd be wise to measure the P polarization in case we need to sort out the two solutions. Here's an example of a primarily dielectric film, uh, which has many turning points in it. And with this, we could fit a formula such as the Cauchy, Cauchy equation or Selmeyer equation or many others that are available. This happens to be quite a good fit from 400 to 800 nanometers of both a uh, coated substrate and the blue curve is uh, an uncoated substrate and the black curves are measured spectral data. The colored curves are fit data to these, but by way of formulas such as Cauchy and Selmeyer. When coating materials have little or no absorbance and the spectral range in the spectral range of interest, there are models such as Cauchy and Selmeyer, which can be adequately fit to the spectral data if the film has sufficient thickness to have at least three extrema in the spectral range. This one, of course, has uh, over half a dozen extrema. When metals and semiconductor layers are deposited, the, absor the absorptance is not well modeled by these forms or formulas. The Lorentz Druda and the Kramers Kronig models are used in ellipsometric data reduction processes. In the present work, we're going to use derive the N and K and thickness from the spectral data at each wavelength from the percent T, percent R forward, and the percent R reverse spectra. In this case, there are no functions used. So the percent T, percent R forward, R reverse are particularly well suited to the geometry of the Carey 7000 with the universal measuring system and the photon RT spectrophotometers made in Europe. The procedures described have usually resulted in two possible solutions for N and K. So the question of which is the physically correct solution has to be resolved by an additional spectral scan 
and we choose 70 degrees in P polarization to compare the two solutions. The correct solution could also be determined by testing for Kramer's chronic consistency of the N and K data. Here's an example of the left and right hand solutions in the above curves for the K value versus wavelength and the lower curves for the N value. Keo published papers showing a technique which has been very useful to us, where we generate a table over a range from zero to five in both the N and K values at a given thickness. What N and K values will satisfy a given percent reflection? And so we have a T curve, which would satisfy the percent transmission measured at a given wavelength, in this case, 563 nanometers, and the forward curve shown here. Then if we further take a third curve, the, re the reverse reflection, we'll get curves that look like this. And if they intersect, at the common point for uh, one point here and another point here, then we have a good solution which satisfies all three spectral curves at that thickness. If on the other hand, the thickness is not correct, we'll get a situation like this here, where if it's too thick, these form a triangle between the three curves because it happens to be too thick or in this case, a triangle between the curves because it happens to be too thin. But if we get just the right thickness, the uh, measured data will all overlap each other at one point here and another one which happens to be off this scale. So here's what we're talking about here in that we first get the effective index of the coding as best we can using the percent T, the R forward, R reverse as optimization, optimization targets given a wavelength and optimize the N and K variables for a solution to all three. Using the procedure by GEO, then a plot of these next ones, which I showed you, will lead us to which exact thickness is the correct answer. Here is the quote, uh, the reference to Guillaume's work, by the way. So to find the N and K versus wavelengths at these measured wavelengths, the thickness is fixed at the, the value which we just found. And then the initial values of N or K are set into the software as estimated starting values. And then we optimize uh, for a given chosen wavelength. So we have the three data points for two reflections and transmission. And the process optimizes for N and K for the best fit to those targets. And uh, then we can use uh, this N and K data to plot our left and right hand curves, uh, which uh, show us the N and K values which fit the, the spectral curves that we measured. So here's the two solutions. And when I plot those, uh, here's the left-hand solutions. And you'll notice the colored curves are the measured values and the black curves are the fitting. So the fitting is quite good here for the left solutions and the right solutions. Uh, either one looks identical and the fits are quite good, almost identical. But it's unclear which one is the correct answer until we take an additional spectral curve, such as the 70 degrees uh, in the P polarization. And here are those plots. So the measured P polarization is seen clearly here. And the right-hand solution in that match quite nicely here. Um, 
whereas the left-hand solution is nowhere close to the measured 70 degree polarization. So this determines which one is correct. Now we have a mismatch out here, and that is thought to be due to perhaps inhomogeneity in the films, but it's no big concern for what we're trying to do here at the moment, but just determine the difference between the left and right solution and which one is physically real. So in conclusion, the procedures for determining the N and K and effective film thickness for a sample which has been, which has significant absorption, but the same transmission has been given, has some transmission. The spectra used are this percent T, percent R forward and percent reverse, which are fairly easily measured in any spectrophotometer. The force spectrum employed uh, is to determine the right or left solution which is correct. And the solutions found are more than adequate to provide production results, which agree with design results. Thank you for your attention. Uh, here is my contact information. If you have any questions after today's presentation.